Good morning, good morning yet again from the Churchtown Church of God. Trying to get my connection issues worked out. Maybe that should be today's topic, eh? Connection issues. We can go all kinds of places with that. Do you have a connection issue with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? There's the ball. There's the dog. She's given up on me trying to throw it. Because I've been playing, there she goes, playing with my phone. All right, Susie, here we go, baby. You deserve, oh, oh, now I threw it up on a pew. She'll never find it. How are you doing, my friends? We're going to stay with this no matter what. We are in the back row of the sanctuary of the Churchtown Church of God. This is what it looks like if you are a back row sitter and you're listening to the music or you're watching the preaching or you are whatever the case may be, looking up toward the altar. That light coming in is through the stained glass. It's really lovely and wonderful. And again, I do believe right now we're having connection issues. I don't know if, um, if this is working or getting out or anything like that. Everything, I've not had any response now for several minutes uh, as this goes out over the airwaves, as they say. So we shall see if it doesn't work out today. It doesn't work out, and that's okay, too. So here's where the ball is. Poor Susie has been looking for it. There we go, my love. There we go. All right. There she goes. Now she's in heaven. Logan. Oh, there is somebody here. Like I said, I don't know if I'm having connection issues. It's not registering anybody or any activity. You can't see me, Bryn, because... I haven't put my ugly mug on Facebook yet today. Ha, ha, ha. But now we're actually turning on the lights. Going through the choir loft. Hey, Rick. Looks like we are broadcasting again. So why don't we say, Good morning, Mark. And good morning, Lord. Here we are. Thank you so much for this opportunity, for this fellowship, Lord. We thank you. And we give ourselves to you this day and every day in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, we mean it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for salvation. Oh, Lord, thank you. How about it? That's just the mood that I'm in today. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, bring her up here. I'll throw it again. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. We had such a good talk yesterday. I'll show you what I'm doing here today. In honor of my good friend, Jim Grove, my ZZ Top concert shirt. I think that was the last concert we went to. We did Rush and then we did ZZ Top. We were gonna do 38 special, were we not? Going back, going back in the day. Huh, you're tagged. I don't know, you know, if you're tagged, I don't know what, what Facebook does or why Facebook does it. I'm trying the best that I know how. Does it make any difference with me though? Because sometimes it says such and such a person is watching and then sometimes it just tells me that uh, there, it shows your comment. And I, I didn't know that you were watching beforehand even, Dennis, before your comment came up. So we're trying to figure it out. Good morning, George. How are you all doing? I know that you're all tagged. Again, when we do this, if you want tagged, we can tag you. If you don't want tagged, I'll take the tag off. Um, I don't know. Maybe as we get on here, um, somebody can say, good morning, uh, Larry Stanger, Dennis Bailey, Mark Snyder, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And tag all the people that way. Or... Um, if you have the share button there, you can share the video right away if, if you want to. I mean, you, you can just go and, and, and that way it'll be on your feed, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is obviously I consider this public property because I'm, it's literally out there on the World Wide Web. Does anybody call it the World Wide Web anymore? www.dalestoopsiswatching.com. Hi, Dale Stoops. 
Um, ba -ba -ba. It's weird. Dennis says it's weird. It says that someone commented on a video that I'm tagged in, but I don't get a notice that you're tagged in it. It uh, doesn't. Don't you hate it when things are out of order like that? We talk about things being out of order all the time on here. Hey, Brett. Welcome to turning on the lights. Join the conversation. You see what I'm saying? We talk about things being out of order all the time. My dog is out of order most of the time. Just out of order. Like, crazy. I think your dog is broken. That's her. That's Pastor Susie. Facebook doesn't make, well, no, you know, I'm not being a smart aleck marker. Maybe I am. Shocker. Remember when they shut me down for having a picture of Jesus on the cross? I mean, it wasn't them per se, but we have that beautiful picture of Jesus on the cross. He is shirtless, and I got shut down for nudity. Now, to their credit, I got to give credit where credit is due. Their algorithm picked that up. Awesome. And, and, you know, gave me a warning and shut me down. And I and said, you know, you can appeal this to actual human beings. And I did. I said, look, this is a picture of Jesus on the cross. He's covered from the waist, at the waist. But he has this, you know, and, and they, you know, disallowed it. So there we go. Brad, good. You talk. We talked yesterday. Man, it was good yesterday. Lots of good commentary yesterday. A couple of comments post turning on the lights that, you know, I want to stay sort of on this topic of personal revelation. Personal revelation as opposed to, and I, I want to continue to draw that distinction. And then maybe we can make, <laughs> that this is very true. You know what expert is all about. Um, and then we can talk also about this idea of a personalized theology. Because I believe, like I said yesterday, they go hand in hand. The idea that is permeating church, that you're receiving personal revelation simply by thinking about it, simply by asking the Lord, what are you saying to me right now? And I think that that, you know, we can talk a lot about that Susie does know what she wants. She is right. This is all Susie wants. Watch. I know, I'm like a squirrel. Squirrel! But that's my dog right there. I love her. Here she comes. The little freight train. She'll do that all day long. Um, Susie is not out of control. Right? You're out of order. You're out of order. This whole place is out of order. You remember that movie? That was a good movie. Liz, good morning. My finger's getting better, Liz. I can bend it. It's still very painful, but it's getting better. Um, this is my personal trainer. And by personal trainer, I mean I, every time I get injured, I, I say, Liz, what's going on? Help me. <laughs> but um, so it's important, right, that we draw the distinction because I do not, I am an individual my theology shares, uh, 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 sits in the idea that the gifts of the Spirit are active in the church today. That all of the gifts of the Spirit are active in the church today. Not all of them are active in every individual believer. We know that, right? But they're active in the body today. So I believe in the supernatural existence of the follower of Christ. I preached on that a lot up there um, on the broad top. The supernatural existence of the body of Christ, the follower. Come here, you. Come here. She's going to be a pain in the rear end. And so that, that, but what does that look like is what we're talking about here. What does that look like? And I think one of the dangerous areas that we drift into when we talk about do we live in the supernatural once we are indwelled by God's Holy Spirit? The answer, in my opinion, has to be yes. 
Why, you know, again, if you hold a predeterministic theology, a Calvinistic theology, a cessationist theology, then you believe that God's Holy Spirit indwells you for very little purpose. Goodbye, Brad. And I, I, don't, I don't understand after all of the teaching about how the church is the body of Christ and how it functions as the body of Christ, right? The head, the hands, the heart, the feet, the everything. I don't understand how you can just take an end around around that and say, well, that was then, this is now. Come here. Okay, can you bring Cindy down here to play with Susie? Because she's making me nuts. And so that, that, so what I'm talking about, what we're talking about here in turning on the lights is how do the two coexist? How do we reconcile that? The supernatural existence of the follower of Christ with the idea that we simply don't hear like, oh, God told me this. Now God told me that. Oh, now God told me this. That's the danger of which I speak. Especially, I said, when you carry that to the pulpit whether you're one of the big famous internet preachers or TV preachers or whether it's me at Churchtown. When you carry that to the pulpit and you say, listen to me, people, God, I shared a word with me last night as I was thinking about this sermon and he told me, you can, at that point in time, you are attempting to speak with the authority of God the Almighty. And my goodness, if you're going to pull that card out as a pastor, you daggone well better have had some sort of incredible personal revelation from Christ that somehow, some way, God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is going to back up in the hearts and the minds of the individuals to whom you are speaking. Ah. That, that is just a hesitancy. That, uh, that, you know, and when an individual comes to me and says, God told me to tell you, really? Really? It's interesting that I hardly know you. God told you to tell me. God didn't tell me anything. Like, and, 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 and we've been in prayer and we've been in a tight relationship for a long time. So I just, that's the area. That's the tension. And I think that there, this is how it drifts into relativism. If I look out and say there's 100 people here, and I say, based on today's scripture reading, based on today's sermon, what is God telling you to do for this church? I've done a sermon on the body of Christ and service in the church, service to the body. What, and, and I get, out of 100 people, I get 47 different ideas. God told me the church should go smaller. God told me the church should go bigger. God told me we should have all modern music. God told me that we should have all hymns. God told me we should have a blended worship. God told me we should have a second service. God told me. So that's just a, a small example that we can get, that we can frame that example and because it, it can become you know, very cut and dry and we can use it as an example. Let alone, hey, what should you do with our lives? What should we do with our money? What should you do with your life? Hey, so-and-so has just shared their heart. We've read scripture about the psalm, about where this individual is. It really relates. What is God telling you that uh, uh, Bobby Joe should do with her life? Well, God told me Bobby Joe should. Well, God told me. Do you see how that blends and drifts into relativism? I thought it was a very dangerous thing up at conference when they were doing this and asking us to write it down. After a certain segment, after a certain scripture, after a certain speaking, there would be the time that would say, okay, now, based on what you have heard, what is God telling you right now? Turn around and get into a group of five or so and talk about what God is saying to you right now. Well, you're trying to find that one direction Right? You're trying to find God's vision, God's purpose, God's plan for not just you, not just a church, but for the denomination. And now you're going to have 120 different interpretations of what people are hearing. 
And sure enough, well, God told me this is not right. God told me this is absolutely right. God told me. And it's funny when you allow for that, when you say, what is God saying to you? Chances are, in our human nest, listen to this, because this is one of the great proofs of what I am saying. I love you guys for putting up with me, playing with my dolls while we're doing this. You're jumping ahead to the end, Jeff. <laughs> um, because chances are, you know, nine, I don't have a statistic, but the vast majority of the time, what God will say to the individual, listen to me now, confirms what the individual believes. I'm right. God just told me I'm right. You're playing on very, very thin ice. And I do say playing. You're playing on very, very thin ice. When we're walking around as a people of God, submitted to God's will by the power of his Holy Spirit, walking around saying, God's telling me this, God's telling me that, God's telling me this. So that is the distinction. Now, where is that distinction drawn? That's a great question. That's the tension in which we exist. What about dreams and visions and personal revelation of that nature, which we hear about, especially in the non-believing world, in particular in the Muslim world? We see Jesus in dreams and visions coming to individuals and sharing with individuals that what they know and what they understand and what they believe isn't right. Do we discount that? I've never had such a dream or a vision. So like I said, my, my teaching is premised on the fact of what I read in Scripture. And I believe that all of the gifts of the Spirit are, can, are active in the church today and can be up employed according to God's will by God's sovereign will. So I do not discount anything. I always give the caveat that God is sovereign and he is a free moral agent. He may do as he decides. And again, we see throughout the Old Testament we are given actually glimpses every once in a while into God deciding something. Interesting stuff. So there's always that caveat in my theology because the, my, the overarching idea, uh, theology is that God is sovereign and God is a free moral agent and God will, can do as he wills in any given moment. If it's, if it's like not a part of his plan now, but if he wants to, he could pop right down here in the middle of this sanctuary if he wanted to, if he chose to. So that, that, that's, that's where I am. So I do not discount. It's kind of like um, the speak, speaking in tongues. You say, well, what about tongues? Your church doesn't believe it. I believe in the gift of speaking tongues and the gift of interpretation. I read what I read in God's holy word about the gift of tongues. And, I, and, and if it were to happen, we would understand, I believe, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, that indeed there is a supernatural event occurring right now. This individual is speaking in tongues. This individual is interpreting the word and it is being used to edify the believer, and the church. Those three things need to be in place according to God's word. And we would witness and we would experience that gift of God's Holy Spirit. Can it happen? Absolutely. I've never witnessed it. I do not believe that it is simply a group of people speaking in tongues. Well, that's not really what Scripture's talking. They're talking about the, the language of angels and all of that. We can get into all of that. I've never been... I've been tried to be conditioned, right, with an individual. Say, it's easy. Just start repeating a word over and over and over, and pretty soon you get caught up, like Paul got caught up. I don't read that anywhere. So anyway, but you see what I'm saying. I, that's an example of the theology. 
There's God's holy word. This is what God's holy word said. Now I am, we are witnessing and experiencing this supernatural event according to God's holy word. Everything is in line. And, and if God would so choose to exercise that, to do that, he can. Boom. So that, that, that's where I am in terms of the supernatural and this idea of personal revelation. And I hope, good morning, Miss Andrea. I hope that I have continue to draw that idea of this is how it leads into some sort of theological relativism. Right? We are preachers of the word. We are proclaimers of the word. And I'm not saying that, that you know, when we are preaching and we are proclaiming, if we are submitted to the power of God's Holy Spirit, this is not a debate. It's not an apologia. It is not a, a teaching session. We are preaching. We are proclaiming God's word as truth. Period. End of conversation. You can go home and debate it all you want, but when you come in here, this is why you come in here. They go to a Bible study and discuss it further, unpack it further, but I'm not going to preach something and say, well, what is God saying to you right now about that? That's the same in my mind as saying, you know, what's your opinion? And that's not the time or place for it. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's where we were yesterday. And I think that there is a ton of scripture to back this up. As a matter of fact, I believe it is the meta narrative of the Bible. When we talk about God's interaction with his New Testament church, we see order, we see structure, we see that being taught. Spiritual order, spiritual structure through which spiritual authority flows. It is not a free for all. There's not everyone in the pews is a prophet or gifted with the gift of prof prophecy. We run into this problem. Someone's blowing up my phone trying to contact me. Nobody that I know it says no caller ID. So you can agree, disagree or what have you. But again, I think we're treading on thin ice. When we become individual hearers of God directly. What's God saying to you right now is a dangerous question. The better question is, what have you been... Yeah, maybe... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be fun, wouldn't it? The better question would be, talk to me, it's not even really a question, talk to me about your walk with Christ lately. Tell me about your time in the Word. Tell me about your prayer life. How has He been leading you? How have you been, how have you been discerning His will for you? Let's, let's talk in more complex and nuanced response than suggesting the fact that you're just going to hear from God. Okay, so that's that. The fifth Sunday service is coming together. We got an order of worship yesterday from our dear friend, Barb Maurice. Lots of music, lots of preaching. The Lord's Supper at Progress Church of God. Bring a snack to share. Everybody, you're like, well, I'm not Church of God. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if I'm a real believer. I'm, I just check in here. Come to Progress Church of God. Look it up. I don't, I, I have the address on my phone. Barb, maybe when you check in with turning on the lights, you just post the, post the address here in the comments. We want you to come. We want you to enjoy. We want, want you to, well, I want to meet everybody. I like seeing everybody physically. Does that make sense? It's neat. Hugs all around. 
Hugs all around. Listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice. Again, the personification of wisdom as a she is interesting when we say, well, this is a facet of God. It's interesting. It doesn't blow my mind. I don't say, see, look, God is a woman. Um, in Christ, there is no male or female, slave or free, Jew or Greek. God may present as he chooses to present. There's a lot of interesting stuff here in chapter 8 of Proverbs about wisdom being around before the creation of the world. Wisdom being around when, and this really harkens to Job, when the oceans were set in their boundaries and the sky was filled with breathable air and all of that stuff. That's right. You've got no excuse. Jeff Musser is coming from the broad top and he is bringing a contingent of 50 broad toppers with him. It's going to be like the broad top marching on Harrisburg. We're, there are going to be so many people at Progress. We're going to be bursting at the seams. It's going to be me and my little guitar, and we are going to be hands in the air. We are going to be jamming. People are going to be singing. People will be just praising the Lord. We are going to hear some preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to get after it Sunday night, my brothers and sisters. You need to come. It's going to be fun, right? You think it's going to be stodgy, old, dusty church service? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. On the hilltop along the road, she takes her stand at the crossroads by the gates at the entrance to the town. On the road leading in, she cries aloud, I call to you, to all of you. I raise my voice to all people. You simple people use good judgment. You foolish people show some understanding. Listen to me, for I have important things to tell you. Everything I say is right, for I speak the truth and detest every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to everyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. Choose my instruction. Oh, you're not a free moral agent? Good morning, Sandra. Everything's predetermined? then I guess that's a lie. We can't choose his instruction. It's been chosen for us. Ah. Are my Arminian roots shining through? Choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. Let me finish here. The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. Interesting. He formed me. He formed wisdom. <clears throat> I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled forth their waters, before the mountains were formed, before the hills I was born, before he had made the earth and fields and the first handfuls of soil. I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizon on the oceans. I was there when he set the clouds above, when he established springs deep in the earth. I was there when he set the limits of the seas, so they would not spread beyond their boundaries. And when he marked off the earth's foundations, I was the architect at his side. I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence, and how happy I was with the world he created, how I rejoiced with the human family. Wisdom as a facet of God. I'm not preaching wisdom is Jesus. 
Wisdom, of course, is a facet of Jesus because Jesus is God. But the scriptures, and do a word study there, the scriptures clearly state that this wisdom is created, not eternal. Very interesting theological fact. Very interesting theological point. And we'll dwell on that as we move through this a little bit longer. So what else would you like to talk about today? Anything on your hearts, on your minds? Anything that you would like to share? Any prayer requests that you would like to share? Um, I had a wonderful experience last evening. This week, um, my teaching is in full effect. Meaning, Monday nights I go down to Scotland to teach the SAT prep course to the International Prep School. So there's 22 students there yesterday from six or seven different countries. Um, Argentina, Dominican Republic, Brazil, United States, Serbia. There were all, there were, there were a couple, there was another one, at least one more, I can't remember. Oh, Australia. So there's six. Really neat group of kids. Um, and we're going to begin this process from now through April of teaching English as a second language. For many of them, English is the second, third, or fourth language. The Serbian speaks five languages. He's come over here to play ball and to try to get a scholarship. It's a wonderful experience trying to help him achieve his goal here, the, working his tail off, learning the language, taking the SAT test in English, and trying to earn a scholarship to an American college. It's, it's a neat opportunity. Um, it's a real cool opportunity for them and to uh, help them be a part of that. So uh, I started that last night. Thursday night teaching at New Providence Church of God in Lancaster. Teaching in the church, it's a great course. Um, recording the radio program this afternoon, doing all kinds of different things. So uh, that's my life. Nobody is talking about that. There we go. Oh, meth. What a scourge. What a scourge. Like the devil knows what he's doing, right? When he gets in there psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually, the devil knows how to do that so efficiently. And it makes me angry, but what we can do, what we can do is we'll pray against this. Because ultimately, it is a lie of Satan that this is a necessary part of their lives. And we can pray, Father God, that in your sovereign power, you would demonstrate that sovereign power specifically on the broad top, in the broad top area, to break the addiction of methamphetamines in people's lives, physical addiction, the psychological addiction, and then the spiritual addiction to the lies of Satan. And pray in your sovereign power that you would break that addiction and Jeff would see power and revival today because of your sovereign intervention in so many people's lives. Lord, that we will put this work of Satan out of business there and everywhere. Lord, that you will pro help provide the people, the spiritual services, the physical services to treat those who have been addicted. And that this testimony of the sovereign power of God breaking these addictions, this testimony will spread throughout your kingdom and, and, and just launch this revival of God's redeeming grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen indeed. Brothers and sisters, let's pray for that. Let's pray for that there and that it spreads everywhere. In the meantime, I've given you chapter 8 of Proverbs to consider. The nature... Hey, Stacy, how are you feeling, my dear? I hope that you are feeling better. 
I know you've been ill. Uh, the, um, the nature of wisdom, the personification of wisdom, how wisdom, what, who, what, who wisdom is, and how wisdom is imparted. I'm tying that loosely to the idea of our conversation this week of the dangers of personal revelation of God and the relative theologies that that creates. And I'm still, I'm interested in hearing your points of view, your conversation about those things. Because ultimately, what Jeff said is true. God is telling me to be obedient to his word. And his word says to read his word, think about his word, pray over his word, and thus I will be able to discern his will for me in my life. Brothers and sisters, again, I add the caveat, God can do as he wishes, but the reality of what I read in here is the fact that it is through your journey with Christ, your developing and developed relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that you will be able to discern his will. It's not as easy as just sitting back going, what are you saying to me, Lord? Oh, Brian, I'm telling you everything you want to hear. That's usually the answer. I'm telling you everything you want to hear. Don't fall into that trap. God bless you guys. Susie says, God bless you guys. Thank you for supporting me in my ball chasing activities this morning. Uh, and I hope that you guys have amazing, positive, and productive days. Get in the Word, stay in the Word, and we will check in with you tomorrow. Comment, comment, comment. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. God bless you guys. Peace. Feel free to like and share the video. That's how this thing gets out. I think that's how people get notified. Tag people that, you know, oftentimes that'll be happening. Hey, you got to hear this because we've talked about a topic that somebody wants somebody to hear. Do all of that. It's yours. Peace.